Study of Language, Chapter 15 Gestures and Sign Language Sign Language George Yule defines sign language as a visual gestural language that uses hand shapes, orientation, location, movement, and facial expressions to communicate meaning. Sign language is a naturally acquired first language for deaf children of deaf parents, just like spoken language is for hearing children. American Sign Language, ASL also called Amelson, is a widely used language in the US, with an estimated 500,000 to 2 million users. Despite its widespread use, ASL was historically discouraged in educational institutions for the deaf, and many considered it merely gestures, not a real language. Gestures. Gestures are movements of the hands, face, or body that accompany speech and convey meaning. Sign language is a full language used in place of speech, while gestures are used to enhance spoken language and convey meaning. Emblems, on the other hand, are fixed signals like thumbs up or shut that have specific meanings and don't require speech. Emblems are culturally specific and can vary in meaning depending on the context and location. It's important to be aware of local emblems to avoid misinterpretation or offense as the same gesture can have different meanings in different places. Types of gestures. There are three types of gestures that accompany speech. One, iconics. Two, dictics. Three, beats. Iconics are gestures that reflect the meaning of what is being said, such as tracing a square in the air while saying I'm looking for a small box. These gestures don't have a fixed meaning on their own, but add meaning to the spoken message. Dictics are pointing gestures that direct attention to a specific object or location. Dictics are used to reference something in the physical space, such as pointing to a table with cake and asking if someone wants some. However, dictics can also be used to reference something that is no longer present, but exists in shared memory, such as pointing to the same table later and commenting on how delicious the cake was. In this case, the gesture and speech combine to create a reference to a past experience. Beats. Beats are short, quick hand or finger movements that accompany the rhythm of speech. These gestures emphasize certain parts of the conversation, mark transitions in a story, or highlight comments. Unlike sign language, beats are not used as a primary means of communication, but rather as a supplementary gesture to enhance spoken language. When hand movements are used as a primary means of communication, it is considered a sign language. Types of sign languages. There are two types of sign languages, alternate sign language and primary sign language. Alternate sign language. Alternate sign languages are limited systems of hand signals used in specific contexts where speech is not possible such as in religious orders or among aboriginal groups during periods of bereavement. These systems are not full languages and are used by people who have a spoken first language. Primary Sign Languages Primary sign languages, on the other hand, are full languages used as the primary means of communication among deaf communities, such as British Sign Language BSEL, French Sign Language LSF, and American Sign Language ASL. These languages are not mutually intelligible and have distinct features, despite popular belief. Oralism. Oralism was a dominated teaching method during 20th century, which focused on spoken English and lip reading. Until the 1960s, American Sign Language ASL was not recognized as a natural language, and many educators believed that using sign language would hinder deaf children's ability to learn English. As a result, the oralism method dominated deaf education in the 20th century. However, this method was largely unsuccessful, with fewer than 10% of students able to speak intelligible English and only 4% able to lip read. Meanwhile, ASL continued to thrive, with many deaf children learning it from each other at schools for the deaf, rather than from their teachers or parents. This led to a unique cultural transmission of ASL, primarily from child to child, with only a small percentage of deaf children learning it from their deaf parents.
Signed English. To facilitate communication between deaf and hearing individuals, many institutions promote signed English, also known as manually coded English, or MCE. This involves signing words in English sentence order. Easier for hearing parents and teachers to learn, allowing them to communicate with deaf children and students. Additionally, deaf individuals often prefer interpreters to use signed English, as it is easier to understand, especially for those who did not learn American Sign Language ASL in childhood. Origins of ASL ASL has a rich history that traces back to the French Sign Language used in a Paris school in the 18th century. In the 19th century, Laurent Clerc, a teacher from this school, was brought to the US by Thomas Gallaudet to establish a school for deaf children. Over time, Clark's teachings combined with indigenous natural sign languages used by American deaf individuals, evolving into what is now known as ASL. This unique history explains why ASL and BSEL, British Sign Language, are distinct and not mutually intelligible. The Structure of Signs ASL American Sign Language is a natural language that uses visual elements, not auditory ones. It utilizes four key aspects of visual information, known as articulatory parameters, to form linguistic signs. These parameters are 1. Shape 2. Orientation 3. Location 4. Movement These parameters are used in combination to create signs. Shape and Orientation In ASL, shape refers to the configuration of the hand and fingers used to form a spiffic sign. Different hand shapes are used to convey different meanings and distinguish between various signs in ASL. There are a variety of hand shapes in ASL, including flat hand as in the sign for thank you. Orientation refers to the direction or position of the hand and palm in relation to the body, the signing space, or the recipient. Orientations are of various types including palm facing upwards, sign for thank you. Location. Location is that articulatory parameter of a SL, identifying the place where hands are positioned in relation to the head and upper body of the signer. In thank you, the sign begins near the mouth and is completed at chest level. Some signs can only be distinguished on the basis of location, as in the difference between summer above the eyes and ugly below the eyes, because hand shape, palm orientation, and movement are the same in both. In some two-handed signs, for example medicine, ship, one hand acts asked base location, while the other hand moves on or above it. Movement. In American Sign Language ASL, Movement refers to the way the hands, arms, and body move to convey meaning. In the sign for thank you, the movement is out and downward towards the receiver. The speed of movement also affects meaning, as demonstrated by a story where a sign for dying was mistakenly interpreted as dead due to a faster movement. Thus, small variations can lead to different interpretations similar to slips of the ear in spoken language. Primes. Primes are the sets of features that form contrasting elements within the articulatory parameters of a SL. By identifying these primes, such as flat hand for shape, palm up for orientation, a complete feature analysis of every sign can be created, allowing for a detailed understanding of ASL structure and meaning. Facial Expressions and Finger Spelling American Sign Language ASL in writing, as it utilizes the visual medium in subtle ways, making motion pictures the most accurate representation. ASL includes non-manual components like head movement, eye movement, and facial expressions, which are essential to conveying meaning. For example, the sign for thank you typically includes a head nod and smile. Finger spelling is a system of hand configurations used to represent the letters of the alphabet in sign language. Signs are typically located around the neck and head, with two-handed signs often placed near the chest or waist.
The visual nature of ASL allows for simultaneous communication of multiple elements, unlike spoken language, which is linear. Representing signs. A partial solution to the problem in transcribing the facial expressions is to write the manually signed words on one line and indicate the facial expression above it using symbols. Like Q for question function or M for a specific, relaxed, and enjoyable expression. The meaning of signs. American Sign Language ASL signs are mistakenly believed to be simple visual representations or pantomimes of objects or actions. In fact, non asl users may create symbolic connections between a sign and its meaning. This is not how the language is used or understood. ASL signs are arbitrary linguistic forms not pictorial images, and their meanings are not derived from visual representations. The sign for America is used as an example, with various theories about its origin, for example, stripes on a flag, mixing pot, coming together, but these images are not what come to mind when a signer uses the sign. Instead, the sign's meaning is established within the system of ASL signs. Just like words in spoken language have meanings within their linguistic system, regardless of their etymology. ASL as a natural language. Research on American Sign Language ASL from a linguistic perspective is relatively recent, but it has revealed that ASL shares all the defining properties of human language, including phonology, morphology, and syntax. ASL has its own word order similar to English and French, and children acquiring ASL go through similar developmental stages as those learning spoken language. ASL is used for humor, storytelling, and creative expression, and it has regional dialects and historical changes, just like spoken languages. Despite facing decades of prejudice and misunderstanding, ASL has endured as a natural language, and increased knowledge of it may help change the traditional answer to the joke about the greatest problem facing deaf people, hearing people.